Friends, Romans, countrymen, and lend me your ears. It's your trusty news anchor bringing you the juiciest, somewhat terrifying rundown on international disasters. Get ready for a wild ride on this episode of Diplomacy, Nukes, and Belly Aches. Now with 50% more dark humor and 100% less chance of good night's sleep. In early 2023... The distinguished scholars at the International Bulletin for Atomic Science, playing their favorite game of scare the bejesus out of us, moved the doomsday clock a hair's breadth from apocalypse. 90 seconds to midnight. About as comforting as finding a spider in your sock drawer. Some argue this countdown to chaos is somewhat understated. It's like describing Mount Everest as a minor inconvenience for hill walkers. We're currently closer to a real-life game of nuclear fallout than any point in history. So let's take a fun-filled whirlwind tour through the most significant events of the past year. And by fun-filled, I mean hold on to your britches, folks. It's going to be a wild ride. Our story begins in November 2021. Russia and his show of self-destructive grandeur shoots down one of its own satellites. It's like punching yourself in the face to show how tough you are. A grand demonstration of its anti-satellite weapon capability, or as I like to call it, space mischief. All this was likely a subtle hint to NATO, like waving a sign saying, look what we can do. Love was certainly not in the air in February of 2022. And what could be mistaken as the world's most aggressive Valentine's Day present, Russia invades Ukraine. Cue the collective gasp from the Western countries, who respond with sanctions, the political equivalent of you're not invited to our birthday party anymore. The USA and Europe deciding to go from a spectator to a participant, starting sending small arms and troops to Europe. Because nothing shouts we're serious like deploying thousands of soldiers. Now, spring forward to March of 2022, when the Russians, not content with the conventional warfare, claimed they used a hypersonic weapon in Ukraine. Because when you're already causing an international crisis, why not make it a sci-fi thriller as well? And while business in Russia started evacuating like a house on fire, our friends in Russia get booted out of the swift banking system. Talk about a tough break, right? By April, our friends in Russia had a tragic Titanic moment. Their flagship, Mosia, is sunk, and then the Kremlin vows revenge. We know things are heating up when vows of revenge are thrown around like confetti at a wedding. In the summer month of June, the USA decides to deliver an early Christmas present to Ukraine. High mobility artillery rocket system. These technological terrors are a game changer on the battlefield in the spirit of solidarity and maybe just not wanting to be left out of the fun. More European countries began to send weapons because when it comes to armaments, sharing really is caring. July arrives, and New York decides to throw a curveball, releasing a nuclear public service announcement. Remember that one? Catching everyone off guard, and I mean everyone. It was like a surprise pop quiz on the subject of nuclear emergency. Panic ensued. The U.S. government decided, well, to stockpile a staggering $300 million worth of acute radiation sickness medication. I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. The roller coaster of disaster barrels through the year 2022 climax in a series of events that might make you wish you stayed in bed. There's near miss missile strikes in Poland, drone attacks on Russian military bases, and troops deployment that makes musical chairs look like child's play. Oh, and just when you thought we couldn't make it any more of a thriller, we have nuclear weapons, submarine deployments, and ominous doomsday planes in the mix. It's like a James Bond film without the charming British accent and martinis. Fast forward to the start of 2023. What's this? 
the USA and Europe decide it's high time Ukraine got some shiny new tanks because nothing says diplomatic negotiations like a battalion of armored war machines. At the same time, Russia decides to give its fallout shelters a fresh lick of paint and surrounds Moscow with anti-aircraft guns, transforming it into a fortress that gave medieval castle builders a run for their money. Now, February rolls in, and just when you thought that the roller coaster ride couldn't get any more intense, Russia officially suspends the New START Treaty, the last strategic arms reduction treaty between Russia and the United States. Suddenly, the term Cold War is starting to feel like a mild understatement. Then, in a pilot twist worthy of a soap opera the u.s fires six high-ranking officers overseeing their nuclear missile silos it's like a dramatic mid-season finale cliffhanger leaving everyone on the edge of their seats anxious clinching their popcorn meanwhile russia is not to be outdone they send more nuclear armed nuclear powered submarines out to sea and they deploy a new class of icbm missiles the RS-28, affectionately known as Satan-2. It seems like they're not even trying to sound friendly with that one. As spring starts blooming, we've got pro-Ukrainian hackers playing the ultimate prank on Russia. Media, a fake nuclear attack alert. You know, just the usual tech wizard mischief. And of course, there's the U.S changing their nuclear doctrine to allow for a prevent nuclear strike. You know, just to keep things interesting. The season continues with more troop deployments, skirmishes, cyber attacks, and more diplomatic comedy than you can shake a stick at. Amidst this, a pro-Russian hacker group manages to put 40% of NATO's cyber infrastructure out of action. The plot thickens. April brings further chaos. The new START treaty suspension means that neither Russia nor the United States have to share their nuclear secrets anymore. It's like they're both going through a messy divorce and arguing over who's going to get the Blu-ray collection. Adding to the drama, the UK commits to shipping depleted uranium rounds to Ukraine. Russia deems this a nuclear threat, and diplomatic relationships grow frostier than a polar bear's picnic. Leaks from inside the government implicate NATO in the training, planning, and coordination of offensive maneuvers within Ukraine. And then an ending as th a thriller as a Hollywood blockbuster, the NATO secretary agrees that Ukraine can join NATO. After defeating the Russians, of course, that is. This promises to crank the tensions up to 11 since Russia is less than thrilled about the idea of Ukraine joining the NATO club. The stakes are high as they have ever been as we step into the future. We've seen everything from a satellite shot down to a divided world on the brink of thermonuclear war. So folks, buckle up. It looks like we're in for quite a ride. Remember friends, we're living in a world that's often more surprising in a plot twist and a sci-fi thriller. And all we can do is hold on tight, keep a sense of humor about it, and never underestimate the power of diplomacy, dialogue, and the occasional diplomatic face palm this is survival preparedness for beginners thank you for joining me today stay safe keep prepping